Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So already in my previous video, I have discussed several AWS services which can be used to run SQL queries, right? And today in my this particular video, I am going to discuss in which context for which particular business requirement you should go with which AWS service, okay? Right? Not all the AWS services you can use interchangeably at every situation there are some particular conditions or particular business requirement based on that there can be different aws services which are optimized in that particular context okay so you should have a clear idea before designing the etl pipeline in the big data domain with cloud computing okay so first thing you should have a question that is do you really need SQL or not okay many companies use SQL because of this reason that it is kind of a fundamental language almost known by most of the employees around the uh, company different LOBs right so they prefer to keep the all the code base in SQL mostly because it will be easily understandable by all the team members okay right so first you should have this question do you really need sql or not okay because every time you cannot query using sql right or you cannot do data processing using sql like for example if i am giving you some image data which has to be processed then obviously that complete image as an object you have to uh, process it you cannot do that using sql right so first thing if that is no if this question's answer is no then you can use these two options either like image data or those kind of data if you want to store and process then you can opt for s3 simple storage service very popular uh, service which is widely used as data lake in the big data world with cloud computing okay another option can be if you are using some iot device and all you can opt for the no sql database dynamodb also okay if you are not using if you are actually not interested to use sql instead of that for some other purpose if you want to store the data then you can opt for this dynamodb also okay now suppose you need sql okay then what you should do you should ask another question whether that requirement is oltp that is online transaction processing happening there is insert update delete on daily basis in a very large amount it is happening like that kind of thing or you want for well ap that is analytical processing of historical data for that you want you need sql so based on this you have you should use different aws service like suppose your business requirement is OLTP, then you can go for RDS like we use normally in on-prem Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, different database, right? Similarly, you can spin up some RDS instance in AWS and then use that for OLTP, that is online transaction processing. But suppose your requirement is querying historical data or those kind of stuff for analytics purpose to improve the business and querying the historical data to get insights from the historical data then the requirement is called OLAP right and then if the requirement is OLAP then you should ask one more question that whether you are trying to run big queries all the time or not if you are trying to run very big queries all the time then it is better to use Redshift okay or maybe that can be Snowflake also which is not actually uh, closely coupled with AWS but in the back end you can use the AWS service to process the data and store in Snowflake okay Snowflake basically in the back end use EC2 and uh, S3 and all these services only and maybe you can use some other uh, Google uh, Cloud service or Azure also as cloud service provider for snowflake there you have option but anyway the thing is if you are running big queries all the time then go for redshift or snowflake this kind of cloud data warehouse system okay you can spin up redshift cluster and then continuously run this kind of very big queries complex queries having lots of joins with big tables and filter condition all these stuffs okay and if you are working in well ap domain but still the queries are not that much complex not that much big okay and you want such system where you will only pay for the query which you are executing against the data if the data volume is high the query might take charge more and if the data volume is less it will take less charge that kind of stuff if you want then you can go for aws athena okay so when should you use athena if you think first you should have a question if you need sql if that answer is yes if you need OLAP, if that answer is yes, 
then you have to check whether the business context in which you are trying to create some pipeline whether they are very complex queries you are executing always or not if you are not doing so then opt for Athena okay or else follow this particular tree diagram or decision tree model and then you can choose the AWS service which is basically optimized for your particular business requirement right I hope you understood this particular one very simple diagram I just basically tried to show all the different different services with respect to SQL or data storage whatever I have discussed till now in my previous videos so when you should use which one on that you can refer this particular diagram okay right and now in the lab section what we will try to do I will just show you a simple demo how to query the JSON data using Athena okay so already in my previous video I have shown you how you can basically use AWS glue to create the schema and then use that particular schema in a table of Athena and query the data against S3 data lake okay so same kind of thing I am going to show you using JSON data today okay and here we are not directly going to use AWS glue crawler or catalog rather we will be directly simply using Athena okay to create the tables like external hive table how we do same kind of format we will try to do here okay so first what we will do we will upload the data in S3 okay so here I will be going to AWS management console and then here I will be going to S3 and then here I will create the bucket and then here I will give demo yt athena json where we will be uploading the data okay and then here I will create the bucket okay so here the bucket is created I will create one more bucket where basically the athena query result will be stored athena json storage result set of the SQL query okay keeping all other properties as default only I am choosing the create bucket option okay so here my two buckets are created one is basically demo yt athena json and this is the one where basically will be storing the result set of the athena query okay now as a next step what we will do we will basically upload the data here json data that is this particular data will upload here okay so here we will go and we'll click on upload we'll add the files okay json data and this is the one i'll click on upload okay so let it upload it is uploaded super now i will go to athena okay i'll show you how to create table in athena directly so what i will do i will go to settings and then here query result location where basically the query result will be stored so for that I'll go to manage and I will choose the location where I want to store the Athena result okay that is this particular one okay I'll choose that and then maybe I'll put one slash and then save that okay so it is done and now I'll go back to editor okay now suppose you want to create a table okay to query this particular JSON data how you do that okay that's what I am going to discuss so as a first step you need to go to here and then here you can see query editor work groups data sources different options are there right so if you click on data sources and then here connect to data source okay here you will see s3 aws glue data catalog querying data from s3 okay both options are there glue data catalog and hive I am choosing this glue data catalog only but anyway we are not going to use glue service explicitly now AWS Glue Data Catalog in this account or AWS Glue Catalog in other account. I am keeping default only. Now we have to create a crawler if we want to use Glue Service to crawl the data in S3 and infer this schema. But I want to create the table as normal Athena table. Okay. So I will choose the second option and I will create the table. Okay. Table name demo yt json query. Okay. Description if you want you can give. Okay. Database. Under which database this table will be there? So for that I will be creating a database. Database name demo yt json set something I am giving. Okay. Now data set. Okay. What will be the external S3 location where basically this Athena table will be pointing to? So for that I will be choosing this particular bucket where basically our data is loaded. I will choose that particular one. I will give one more slash so that it will indicate inside that our data is located. 
and then data format okay so what is the data format our data is json format so we'll be choosing that and then here column details we need to pass so what are the column details here first one is this particular one anyway i'll be providing this json data also in the description box so that you will be using this for poc purpose or something i am just copying this names key value pairs i am just extracting the key and i am putting here but many times json might not be that much good okay it might be nested it might be messy so that time you might need to pre-process or do some activity which is not that much simple in that case okay but here my primary aim is to show you how you can create athena table directly okay first name okay i think i am putting in partition detail it should be in column name sorry it should be in column names is active balance age first name last name okay so partition i am not keeping for this particular demo so here basically i am entering the column details okay so till last name we have given is there anything else yes company okay we will be choosing this particular one and here we will be Testing. okay now data type okay so what is this one this is string first one is string second one is active is boolean next one is string okay first one string next one boolean next one string so string boolean string okay right and then age is integer first name is string last name is string company is string okay so age is integer first name is uh, string last name is string company is string okay that's pretty much it with respect to setup point okay for our this particular table okay now see athena will be automatically creating the table ddl from these informations okay if you are partitioning the table based on a particular column you can keep that okay see here preview table query here it is giving right create external table if not exist under this particular database this is the table name these are the this is the schema what we specified row format third that is json third and then here some properties and then location like same like external hive table how we do okay and table properties has encrypted data false because data is not encrypted so i will create the table as soon as i click on create table what will happen this query it will run also see here completed so if i choose the database that is this particular one demo yt json set see here demo yt json query table is created if i expand we are having these all informations now let me just show you one simple query select star from this particular table okay maybe where uh, i can basically filter on is active okay which is basically boolean column okay is active equal to true and then here top 10 record suppose i want to get so i can put limit 10 same like how we do in hive okay no change okay so here if i just run this query we'll be seeing the result of top 10 uh data points okay so this is how you can query the json data using athena and now if i go to s3 okay so here if i go to s3 and then here athena json uh, result set whatever you are storing see here if i go to objects unsaved then un under that year month date and then see here datas are stored okay right so this is how basically you can use Athena to directly crawl instead of running behind blue crawler, blue catalog and all this. Okay. Point to be noted, Athena will only charge based on the query what you are running. Okay. In the back end, it basically it will spin up some EC2 cluster or something. So this complete thing is basically with respect to our side, it is serverless, right? We don't need to think what is going in the back end. But in the back end might be some EC2 cluster is spinned up, which is executing this query as a processing engine and then returning us the result set. Okay. 
only athena will charge you but the overall management it will be doing in the back end okay and how much it will charge depends on how much data it is querying okay depending on that charge will be coming right so i hope you understood this this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you